today we are going to be speaking about how can you master the CFE exam for you to be able to pass it from the first time. And we have three steps here. The first one is applying for the exam. Usually for the CFE exam, you need to apply for the exam before taking the course, which is very essential because once you start the course, you can take the exam during one week and finish it. The process will take approximately five to 10 days. It depends on your documentation. So make sure before even you start the course that you have your certificate, your college certificate or transcript. You have three recommendations by uh, uh, co-workers inside your organization as well as you have your professional photo and all your information ready so for you, you can apply for the exam before taking the class. Once you get approved, the next step that you take the CFE review course. Now, my recommendation before taking the CFE review course, it's very useful if you have the material two weeks, three weeks in advance and you go a little bit over the material. So in that way, this is a CFE review class. We are not gonna go explain everything in details will cover 90% of the topics. So it's very important for you to understand the topics at, at least initially, so in that way in the class you are reviewing the topics and you can take the exam the same day. You don't have to wait until after the class and take the exam. During the class, always our recommendation when you are taking the exam during the class that you have your highlighter. And you are using the highlighter for three things. I always recommend three highlighters. We have the yellow highlighter, we have the red highlighter and we have the blue highlighter. The yellow, you are highlighting something that's important, but it's not difficult for you. You are highlighting something that may come in the exam. Now you have the red highlighter where you highlight something you don't understand clearly or it's difficult for you so you can review it later, or you are highlighting something very important. There are so many questions about it in the exam. Now what about the blue highlighter? The blue highlighter is for everything related to memorization. If you need to memorize definitions, if you need to memorize uh, 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 certain you know, steps, you highlight them because this is where, before taking the exam, when you open your books, one hour, two hours before the exam, you can see. Yellow, it's okay. I need to review the red and I need to memorize the blue. It's easy for you before taking the exam to be able to review the material. After the class, the way for you to prepare is the following. You have two things. You have the PowerPoint slides as well as you have the training material. My recommendation that you start with the training material. For each section, you review this section. You don't review a full uh, uh, you know, uh, book or full chapter. No, you review one section. So we are speaking, for example, about the interviewing. We take the first section in the interviewing. You review it. And after that, you go to the software and you do the pre-assessment. The pre-assessment will highlight to you which area you have difficulty in so you can go back to the book and review it again. Then the next step, you go over the PowerPoint for you to do a quick review before you start with the review uh, uh, study questions. In the software, they have for each section different questions. So you start by these questions, question by question using the study mode. With the study mode, once you answer the question, you will be able to see your answer. You will be able to see why it's correct and why it's not correct. So in that way, you go over it, you answer it, and you see if you understand the topic. If it's not, maybe you need to go back to your material, uh, you review the, the uh, information, then you practice again. The cool thing about the software, they have the option that you can select everything you answer correctly last time, everything that you answer incorrectly last time, everything that you didn't answer. So in that way you have different options to go over the study material over and over. Now what is important for you to do after that is if you feel in some questions you don't understand, you go back to the material and you review it again before the final step, which is taking the practice exam. When you are taking the practice exam, it will help you going back and taking an actual experience of an exam before taking the final exam because that will tell you exactly if you are ready to take the actual exam or not. You need to score, based on my experience, more than 80 to 85% on the practice exam before you feel you are ready to take the exam, the actual exam. Now, after you do that and you are ready for you to take the exam, you need to understand some very important information and tips. Number one, 
in the software ACFE they have very nice style of saying all of the above is correct all of the above is correct so when you are studying you feel like yes all of the above always is the correct answer however in the exam the situation is not it's completely the opposite all of the above most likely is not the correct answer so in that way you need to make sure when you are studying that you are not going to use that style when you are taking the exam number two when you are answering questions in the software the question will be th the definition of this is this true or false so you say it's true which is correct in the exam they give you completely the opposite thing it's going to be false so it's not about memorizing the questions that you have and going into the exam and answering them in the same way if they have different uh, multiple choice if a is the correct answer in the exam it will be c because there they say which one of the following is the best here they say which one of the following is the least so make sure that you understand exactly what the question is asking you about i have one of my students he is very uh, good in the class he studied really well then he failed in the exam and he said i answer all the questions correctly then when i told him to go retake it again he said now i understand what happened I answer them correctly based on my understanding and memorization of the question rather than reading the questions in front of me. For the exam, you have 125 questions and you have 75 seconds for each question. That doesn't mean that if you finish the question in 30 minutes and go to another question, you can come back to it. So if there are some questions you are not sure about, take your time until you finish the 75 seconds. So answer initially what you think it's correct and then look at it until you finish the 75 seconds. Some questions, they are easy, true and false. 30 seconds finished. Now what will happen? At the end of the exam, you can come back to them to review them because maybe you answered them incorrectly or maybe you, you read them quickly. So you still have that time for these questions that you answer. The most important thing in the exam when you are answering the questions is to see what they are trying to ask you for. They are not looking at what will happen in real life. They are looking at understanding the actual process that you need to follow in conducting any examination. The actual rules and regulations that you need to uh, apply when you are speaking about handling a case in a legal segment. So understanding the topics in the material and understanding the uh, uh, logical order of it is very important. For that, my recommendation, when you are doing your study, what you need to do, you need to have an, an extra page where you are trying to summarize the information. So you create your own uh, cognitive map inside your head to say, common law will say this, civil law will say this, the criminal law under it will say that. In that case, when, you, when the question will be in front of you in the exam, you can say, okay, now I understand they are speaking about the civil law, they are speaking about a civil case, they are speaking about the, uh, you know, uh, before trial or after trial, so I understand exactly what is the correct answer here. That's the most important approach in, in studying for the exam. Now, the strategy for you to take the exam, the best and the most effective strategy that I discovered. To take the exam, based on your experience, you decide which section you need to take. So, if you are a lawyer, you say, well, the law section is the easiest one, so I'm going to start with it. And I say, no, 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 that's the wrong approach. Because you start with the law section, you are so happy, then you're stuck in financial. Then you're stuck in financial. And you'll be like, oh my God, when I'm going to finish this? Start the opposite. If you are a lawyer, start with the financial section. Because it will take you maybe uh, two weeks, three weeks, finish it. Then when you come to the law, it's easy. When you come to the law section, you can get them easy. So try to understand which section you need to start with. Now, if you are good with all the sections, what is the preferred order? The preferred order that I tell my students if they are good in all the sections, start with the fraud examination. Fraud examination is the first one. Why? Because it's logical. It will make sense. You have experience in it. You feel it's easy. You finish it. Then you go to the fraud prevention and deterrence. You, you take that one. That one is a little bit, maybe there are more theories in it. But it's okay. Now you come to the law. Most likely, if you are for the examiner, the law section will be more difficult for you. So in that way, you study it, but at, at, at least you finish two sections, so you feel it's okay. And finally, you do the financial. Financial will be a lot of content, but it's easy to go through. Maybe it will take from you more time than the rest because of the questions.
So this is the most appropriate strategy for you to be able to prepare uh, for the exam and take the sections. Now exam taking tips. What you need to do when you are taking the exam? Make sure that you are using the most updated internet browser. Because many of my uh, students, when they are taking, they discover it's a crash or something happened because of the browser or because of the internet. Make sure you have powerful internet connection. Don't do it in a hotel where after one hour they are gonna you know, log you out and you are gonna lose the connection. Make sure when you are doing the exam, you know, the computer that you are using, they will, not have, they will not have any technical difficulty in that computer. Make sure the surrounding area is okay so that way there are no noise, no disruption. In case you need to, you know, stop, they have five minutes, right? They have five minutes to stop for the, uh, if you want to go for coffee break or if you want to, you know, uh, to go do something. But it's not a five minutes for you to go open the books to see the questions that you couldn't figure it out. So this is a closed book, it's not an open book exam. During the exam, when you are taking the exam, you can't. Yes. So you can't, you can't do any of that. So make sure that when you are taking the exam, you are ready, you are prepared. These are some of the tips and suggestions that I recommend for you when you are taking the exam. I hope you, you are on your journey to become certified for the examiners. Thank you very much.